Hey everybody, SF Logic Ninja here, or you can call me David Earl. I don't care. So I've been away for a while. Um, got extremely busy. Lots of things uh, happening. Um, probably going to have a live chat. Actually, I'll just make it happen. Uh, live chat tomorrow at 4 p.m. Tomorrow being uh, Sunday. The let me check. Uh, 16th. So Sunday the 16th, 4 p.m. Uh, SF Logic Ninja is my name. Go on to iChat and check it out. Uh, but today we're going to go over the transform window, a uh, quick little thing, and then uh, I'll be back to your comments and messages and things like that tomorrow. Take care and have a good time. Ciao. Okay, everybody, welcome back. I've got myself a drum kit and I'm going to use it. Uh, as soon as I figure out what my record command is. There we go. Okay, so rhythm wasn't completely on, so I'm gonna go and click on it and quantize it. Okay, once again to quantize, I click on the MIDI region, come over here, there's quantize, 16th note, Now, if I want, I click and open this up, look in the piano roll editor, and I see that every note is exactly on the beat. Now, most human beings who play the drums don't play that meticulously precise. So if I want to make this sound a little more like a human being, I want to add a little bit of a random variation in here. And the way to do that is to use a window that I haven't talked about yet called the transform window. Under the window, transform, boom. There we get our transform window. Now the transform window has several presets that are very handy. If I click up here, I can see it's got crescendo, scale, 14-bit pitch bend, double speed, half speed, humanize, reverse position, reverse pitch, etc., etc., etc. I'm going to go to humanize, and let's have a look at this. Okay, the transform window is basically broken up into four parts. We have the preset area, we have the mode, we have conditions, operations, and then down below we have select only, operate only, select and operate. And in this specific case we have a map. Okay, What the map does is at the furthest left side of the map that is a MIDI value of 0. The furthest right of the map zero, uh, is 127. So as I can see I've randomized the values a little bit between 0 and 127. Okay, So let's get up to conditions and operations. Let's forget about this map for a second. So conditions and operations are the most important thing to understand when you're using the transform window. Up above, we've got position, status, channel, pitch, velocity, length, and subposition. Okay, position is where events are in time. Status is what kind of MIDI event you're dealing with. Channel is what MIDI channel you're dealing with. Pitch is MIDI pitch. Velocity is MIDI velocity, how hard I hit the key. Length is how long the, the note is, and subposition means within a bar, let's say I chose two and four, uh, if I chose to select all the subpositions in other bars, I would select two and four of every other bar uh, that is within a specific range. So now, if I was to change the status to control, control information doesn't have pitch and velocity. So over here, my data bytes have changed to data bytes. Data byte one, data byte two. So this would be what's the controller number and what's the value of the controller. If it was volume, it would be a controller number of seven, and then it'd be whatever the volume is between zero and 127. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this back to note. Now what this specific transform window is doing is it's applying operations to notes. So the conditions are, what are we affecting? Operations are, what are we doing? So in this case, under position, straight down we have randomize. Operation is randomize plus or minus a specific amount. Over under velocity, it's randomizing 10, either positive or negative. Under length, it's randomizing the note length, 10 ticks. Okay, So that's specifically what this humanize action is doing. It's randomizing velocity, it's randomizing the note length, and it's randomizing the note position. If I hit select and operate, it selected everything within the region that I had selected, 
and it's moved these ever so slightly. If I click and hold on this note, I see that it's at 114232. Okay, so it's 232 ticks in a direction. Uh, subposition has been randomized. Now watch this. If I keep clicking select and operate, the randomization gets even more intense. And if I listen to it, it's not completely off, but it's a little more human because we humans are so random, right? Okay. So maybe that's not the best description. But if you want to make your own transform window set, what you do is you click and hold right here, and you go down to Create Initialized User Set. Create. Now, basically, all of these different areas of the conditions and operations are open. Once again, conditions are, what are we going to do this stuff to? And operations are, what are we doing? OK? So if I go to, say, Status, and I click, I can see status equals either a fader information, metadata, note, pressure, control, program, channel pressure, and pitch bend. Now the things that you guys will probably be dealing with the most is note information and control information. Okay, Pressure has to do with aftertouch. So if you have a keyboard that's set up to use aftertouch, those would be um, probably relevant. Program changes only if you have an external device that you want to change sounds on. Control that, you can do a lot with control. You can control pan, you can control um, modulation wheel, uh, you can control, if you have controllers assigned to knobs within a specific instrument, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Uh, and then we have note information. Note is probably, you know, n most of the time when you're going to use the transform window, it's going to either be note or control, so let's click on note. Now, when we do that, you see again that the data byte parameters 1 and 2 have changed to pitch and velocity. Okay, now directly under status, let's look under um, position. So if I say position equals, then it's going to choose this exact position: one, 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 bar one, beat one, division one, tick one. Okay. Now directly under the position, let's say we wanted to shift the position of that specific location. I click here. Look at all these things I can do. I can fix, add, subtract, minima, uh, minimum, maximum, flip, multiply, divide, scale, range, blah, 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 blah. I have all these things I can do. So let's say I just said add. What that would do is it would add a specific amount to that position. So if I said 5 by a division of 5, <laughs> you can't have 5 because, Dave, you can't have 5. What are you doing, Dave? My brain. Okay. Oh, that's ticks. And then this is division. Yes. Yes, oh, I see. So you can add a specific amount. Now this area looks a little janky to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click. I think they have a, I think there's actually an error going on. Because um, it wasn't showing me bar beat. Uh, division and tick. Now I see that there are three little dots. Probably need to zoom in on this. Three little dots and then a number. That makes a lot more sense to me. So if I said um, 0 0.0.0.200, 0 0 uh, that would be 200 ticks. Yeah, you see? It is an error. It's going off the screen a little bit. So if you guys want to adjust position, um, you probably want to double click and enter the number yourself. Um, you can put dots in between, bar, beat, division, and then tick. Now there's 996 ticks per quarter note, just so you know. Okay, now that I have you completely confused, I'm going to go and turn this back to through again. Let's think of something really simple that we can do. Well, we've got status equals note. note. Uh, if we go to pitch and it says all, it means it's going to select all note pitches. So maybe I'll say uh, status equals Okay, the pitch equals uh, all notes that are on C1. C1, enter. Um, so everything on C1, maybe I want to shift it down, subtract 1. Okay, so it takes it from C1 to B, right? To B0. So that's an example of one operation.